So I'm going to be actually talking about the enchanted world in the second section. But in this uh, first part of the evening, I'm going to be talking about uh, the tyranny of perfectionism and the distrust of authority. So I have to admit that this is probably seems a strange way to introduce a Buddhist ritual, but I think these may be important factors, not just in relation to ritual, but actually any aspect of our spiritual practice. And I hope that the reason I'm focusing on these two qualities, perfectionism and distrust of authority, that it will become clear as we go through. And I'm hoping that these two talks, that they'll be useful for those of you who feel bemused or uncomfortable about ritual, as well as for those of you who are fortunate enough to feel that ritual is a really meaningful and important element within your Buddhist practice. And this talk, as Naravira uh, has alluded to, is that this is really by way of an invitation to join a course with myself, uh, Tim, Alison and Jay, uh, where we're going to be uh, running a course entitled Stepping Down from Your Aloneness. And this course, this ritual course, will be very much uh, uh, a, co a course around inquiry, really. So there's going to be various exercises and reflections and discussion about the many different aspects of, uh, of ritual. And it'll be taking place over six evenings, starting on the 28th of April. All the details uh, are on the website. And our intention really behind this course is to really help deepen your personal connection with, uh, with ritual as a doorway into meaning. Uh, this is a little quote from Sangharachita. It says, meaning is not a thing that you can grasp by looking in a dictionary. Meaning must be meaning for you something that you personally experience. Our quest for meaning is therefore our quest for ourselves, our quest for the totality, the wholeness of our being. So I'm starting with this quote because the aim of the course is not to explain away ritual, but may uh, hopefully to draw out, even amplify and knowing that is actually already in you. The basis of the course is that we wish to honour the truth that we all are utterly interwoven within an enchanted world. And ritual really is the enactment of our conscious stepping into this web of interconnection and meaning. And through that, dissolve any sense, any delusion of isolation and aloneness. So I'm focusing tonight, uh, or beginning this part of the evening at least, on these two views of perfectionism and the distrust of authority. Because for me, they really encapsulate the destructive, the destructive aspects of literalism. Literalism is what actually keeps us out of the complexities of an enchanted world. So let's start with this term perfectionism. So what I'm going to be talking about, I just have to begin by saying I'd be really happy if you tell me that this isn't true for you. But I'm assuming uh, for most of us, uh, that when you, when we, when I came along to the first uh, time to a class, it was because we wanted some aspect of our li lived experience to be different to what it actually was. So maybe we wanted to experience less stress, less anxiety, or maybe we wanted to escape from some uh, addictive pattern or be less depressed, 
or less ashamed at the rage at life at not turning out how we'd hoped. Maybe you came along to these, uh, to the centre, to the classes, hoping to find something here that you could add on to, patch onto your life without actually having to change anything. Maybe add on a bit of calm, a bit of ease or contentment, or maybe just a bit of meaning. So that's one possibility. And unfortunately, even if we've been coming along to the Buddhist center for years, we still might be trying to use Buddhism and Buddhist ritual to fix or patch ourselves up in some ways. And I see this as a great tragedy because while we're all making this effort to love and be aware, we still may be banishing parts of ourselves because of some view that this part is unacceptable. I think this is one of the misunderstandings uh, that can drive our attempt at banishment. The misunderstanding is that of uh, our views around what we describe as positive emotion. So positive emotion is actually a way of relating and being present to any sensation that arises. It's an intention of care uh, and curiosity towards our actual experience. And this is really needed when we're trying to banish the symptoms, the particular ways through which we express our suffering. If our hurt, our recoil, anger, depression, or numbness are banished, rather than being held in kind attention, we may never discover the precious longings that lay hidden within these experiences. Many of us are so quick to jump to this feeling that we should be other than we actually are. And this runs the risk that we abandon ourselves, abandon our actual experience. And this is actually an act of violence. And we could say this is uh, this sense of abandonment of these more difficult experiences is the near enemy of positive emotion. So I'm not saying this to, to judge, uh, but more to help us sympathize and meet each other in our common experience and counter this tyranny of perfection this view that we have to be a particular way and then banish all these uncomfortable, messy bits that make so life so imperfect. So I definitely see this in myself, which is perhaps why I'm uh, sensitive to seeing it in others. However crudely or subtly we do it, I believe that on occasions, we're all trying to fix some sense of ourselves, get rid of some aspects of ourself, add on some bits, these shiny bits that get me, you to suffer less and fit the preconceived shape of what I could or should be. And I hope we might notice how this mindset, these views, subtle or blunt, of wishing things to be a particular way, limits our capacity to really relax and engage with confidence and sensitivity to what's actually being offered to us within our life. The more we can do this, the more we can naturally unfold and be met in our own wholeness. And what's pertinent in relation to this talk is that we might imagine we have to be a particular way in ritual. We might imagine we're having to feel something specific, or we might get caught up in having to get the words or the actions right. When actually it's this very softening of the grip of imagining how things are or should be 
that allows us to enter the ritual space. If there's some fantasy of how we should be, it's really hard to notice what's actually arising, particularly in our emotional response. So we might be really missing the gifts of the moment because we feel in some way uh, we are imperfect. We're too much, too little, whatever it is we think we should be for this particular moment. And yet, like everything else, ritual happens right here. Meditation happens right here. Our whole life is happening right here, not over there in some fantasy of a perfect life which we've constructed. So in terms of ritual, all we need for our next step is to know it's right here. And my plea for us all, including myself, is to enter the world, come into relationship with what is here, as you are, as we are. Knowing we're good enough, we have exactly what we need to unfold into the next step of our potential. So the question is, why is that so difficult? Why do we find it so difficult to simply engage, enjoy, explore ritual or meditation or study or friendship? Why do these things come so um, loaded on occasions? And I think the answer may lay in this second view, which I'm trying to uh, want to open up a bit. Uh, this is the distrust of authority. So this unending task of trying to fix ourselves, we need to recognise that that is learnt behaviour. We're probably carrying a view of perfectionism that has been given to us by those we perceive as having some authority over us or who appear to have access to some secret source of meaning which we craved for ourselves. And the tragedy is that despite all our attempts to follow the advice of these perceived authorities, we're still left unsatisfied, undernourished and disillusioned. So I should emphasize again, this claim is coming out of my own experience. But however, I believe many, if not most of us, will be carrying a deep disappointment, distrust, or at least uh, some disillusion with some form of external authority, which has attempted to exert influence, even control over our lives. And this disappointment is because that trust, that faith has been broken. It's been abused or simply left unmet. The initiations that we've longed for have shown themselves to be limited and unreliable. So this means we're living in a double bind. We have this internalized critic, which is often invisible to us, always seeking the fantasies of perfection that we've learned from some chosen external authority. But simultaneously, our relation to those external authorities has been broken. So we're left with suspicion, even cynical doubt regarding the external authority while still running their demands internally. And to compound all this, we may never have been encouraged to honor and trust the internal authority of our own experience. So I hope we can see in this the dysfunctional dynamic between our conscious distrust of authority and our unconscious desperate need for perfection. So there are going to be any number of variations of this in our individual lives. Maybe we are carrying some disappointment or hurt in relation to the real or imagined failed promises or expectations of our parents. 
maybe they didn't protect us, didn't initiate us in how to establish clear boundaries, or didn't initiate us uh, into know and trust what arises from our heart and belongs to us and what is a compulsion to be accepted by trying to meet the expectations of others. It may have been in our family of origin that maybe we were taught to fear life or that we were unlovable to be as we were. Maybe we learned that being ourselves was too dangerous or some of us may have wasted precious years trying to live the life that our parents wished for us rather than follow our own responsiveness. And all these variations now make it hard to value what we actually have uh, and had. And I'm imagining each of us will have some uh, story in this territory. But another area of distrust may have arisen from our education. Sorry, Rich. It's, um, some of us will have tasted the thinness of the broth that was served up as the failed promises or expectations of education. A reductive uh, system that only teaches and, only fit and therefore only places value on that which can be measured and quantified. And this can be at the expense of individual inquiry or emotional responsiveness and sadly can often dishonor our intrinsic sense of beauty, curiosity, awe and mystery. And the childlike sense of multiple layers of meaning within experience, which we then come to distrust or undervalue. Other of us, others of us may have placed our hopes and expectations in politics, only to watch with despair uh, power-hungry, squabbling politicians twist truth and ditch integrity to maintain their positions. We may have placed our hopes in humanity, only to watch our society fragment and polarise. We may despair as a society fails to unite and as a species we continue to ravage the planet for our short-term satisfaction. So you might be wondering why I'm talking about these assumptions about perfectionism and a distrust of external authority when I'm supposing to be introducing a ritual course. So this long preamble is really to get to the key point which is that religion may also be seen as an authority. And so we may be caught in this same deep distrust. For some of us, religion can feel so dusty and maybe even naive. The strange overornate or gruesome, Im gruesome images, the well-meaning promises of a future heaven or threats of hell, the rules and regulations that seem so far removed from our personal life. Why would we give our authority over to an ancient religion as we try to tackle our living questions right now about how to leave, lead a meaningful, useful and modern life? So the potential problem with religion in this context is that it's quite rightly associated with ritual. So if we've lost faith in religion, when we come across ritual at our classes, as we've just uh, experienced, well, we may feel a strong desire to head for the hills or conversely simply engage with ritual in quite a superficial, even a sentimental way. It may be particularly challenging, ritual that is, if we've come to the view that Buddhism isn't really a religion at all, it's just a philosophy. 
And this may have meant that we've hoped in the turning up here to these classes that we could escape the apparent demands or authority of religion, only to have it thrust in our face for every Sangonite. So I'm beginning here with these assumptions, not to be proved right or wrong, but simply to open up this exploration of ritual. For me personally, I'm not really concerned whether we describe Buddhism as a religion or a philosophy. I'm not even particularly interested in whether you consider yourself to be a Buddhist or not. I think these can just set another uh, a set of expectations. And I'm not that concerned about your relationship to education or politics or your parents. What I'm more concerned about with tonight is to remind you, to convince you that we have a natural bond with the world and with each other, which may have been damaged because of this distrust of perceived external authority. So I know for myself, I long to refine my own trust in this knowing that we are utterly interwoven into the world. And that this world is always something more than us. And yet we are an integral piece within it. We are each an expression of this precious life and potentially always meeting that which stands beyond and alongside our limited views. Always opening, always revealing beauty and meaning and our utter interwoven nature. And this really is the foundation of Buddhist ritual. And I hope we can find this as something we can really lean into and trust. This is just uh, as important now for us as it was at the time of the Buddha. So this is the Buddha speak, uh, um, talking about the Buddha. I've heard on one occasion when the Blessed One was newly self-awakened. He was staying at Uruvela on the bank of the Naranjana River at the foot of the goat herd's banyan tree. And then whilst he was alone and in seclusion, this line of thinking arose in his awareness. One suffers if dwelling without reverence or deference. And the Buddha, with that thought, he considered every human being that he could revere or feel this deference towards and recognize that there was no being that he could uh, feel that towards. So his reflection continued and said, well, what if I were to dwell in dependence on this very Dharma to which I have fully awakened, honouring and respecting it? So I'm going to, uh, in the second half, very much continue on this theme of reverence and the need for reverence in our life. <clears throat> 